Here we go again, into the nether maze. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Mad Merlin's unboxing. And today we have Warhammer Underworld's nether maze, Hexbane's Hunters. So this is the recent warband for Warhammer Underworlds. And as you can see from the front of the box, it is a lovely update on the classic Witch Hunter warband that was last seen in Mordheim for those of you of a certain vintage. But as you can see on the front, we've got four human characters plus two dogs. Each one looks really nice, unique. We've got the acolyte there with her pistol and axe. We've got the fully armoured crossbow guy there with explosive uh, crossbow heads. Giant hulking brute with an axe, and of course, Hexbane himself. Moving around to the back of the box, we can see what's inside here. So, Hexbane's hunters scour Never Maze, bringing the light of Azir to its darkest depths. So, we can see Hexbane himself, Haskell Hexbane himself there, all fully built and painted. So, that's the actual size of the models there, and these are um, half sized. And it shows the models all built up in their plastic conditions. So containing six fighters, six fighter cards, 32 hunter cards, 12 grand alliance cards, and 20 universal cards. Set in the mortal realms and from Citadel by Warhammer. And on the side of back, side of the back, what? On the side, we have build your warband, select your decks, and battle your rivals. So that's a nice um, game system, as those of you will know. And these are going to be added to my already pretty um, big pile of stuff to still be painted. I still have the Never Maze core set models to paint, and I still have um, the Crimson Court. And I'm halfway through Eyes of the Nine, so I have got a lot to work on. And I still plan on buying the um, uh, Karax, Karazax Ravagers, the um, Warrior of Chaos Warband. That one does look quite nice. So I might pick that one up from my local store. It has it still in stock. It's now uh, no longer available online. But I might pick that up. And I might also pick up the Star Blood Killers, the... Um, Lizard Man one, that looks pretty cool as well. But we're here to see this. So let's open up. Normally I would open from the top, but it's a lot easier to open from the bottom. So we'll just cut the tape like so. Pull it out, flip it back over and pull the tray out. I'll stand the box back there, if it will. No, nope, it won't. We'll go there then. So, here we have our contents pack. So, we have our first frame here. So, this has Hexbane himself, plus he's Acolyte and one of the dogs. I'll have a closer look at those under the overhead cam in a bit. And then we have on our second frame, our second dog, the big brooting guy with the double head the axe, and we have our crossbow guy. As with all Underworld Warbands, we do get a set of cards and the instructions there, and that is the end of it. So we will open these up. Like so. So we have our actual deck itself for Hexbane's Hunters. We'll have a look at that in a bit. So then we have a little bit more about the warband itself. So Haskell, Hexbane, and his band of mirthless, mirthless followers, even. Are, the ruthless, are as ruthless as they are determined. They are members of the Order of Azir, a Sigmarite organization dedicated to the rooting out and purging of evil across the mortal realms. 
This clandestine sect has sent Hexbane and his hunters deep within Nevermaze to bring the burning light of Azir to the very heart of that foul and unnatural place. That they might scour it from the, with, in the cleansing fires of justice and order. Though made of but human flesh and blood, Hexbane's hunters burn with conviction and bring with them the full might of humanity's ingenuity and artifice. Let the shadows beware. Aw, no mention about dogs. And then we have our additional card pack here. So this is all our Universal cards and Grand Alliance cards. Nice thick bit of card. It's nice that they're doing this now rather than the um, individual packets in the bottom of the tray. I always have use for a bit of card. And then we have our instructions. So we'll go over that again when we go vertical. And so here we are, all vertical, and we can take a closer look at these models. So we'll look at one frame at a time, and I think we'll start with Mr. Hexbane himself, made up of a few components there. So you've got the back of his cloak, his left side there, and his right side just there. We have one of the two Mastiffs, look really cool. And we have our Acolyte here with her axes and her revolver pistol. And then we have the back of uh, Mr. Hexbane himself there with some extra, no front, sorry, with some extra stakes for stabbing those um, evil shadows. We look at the bases, they are really nice, very classic um, dungeon style bases. We've got um, scattered stones, bones, and some nice um, rippling water effects. That'd be quite nice to paint up. And of course, plenty of fallen masonry as well. So, moving on to the second frame then. So, we got the remaining two members plus the remaining dog here. So we got the exploding crossbow bolts there, plus the crossbow arm itself. Extra ammo there. The other two halves of the mastiff and our hulking bruiser with his giant axe and massive full plate armor. And then we have the mask head for our crossbow moon, I'm guessing. Must be, unless it's on the other frame. But yeah, all in all, some really good models. And like I said, there's lots of nice detail on these models. That rippling water effect is really, really good. Can't wait to build and paint these guys. Speaking of building, let's take a look at the Hexbane's instructions. So we build Hexbane himself first of all, parts 1 to 10. We've got a couple of sub-assemblies to make as well. Oh, sorry, 1 to 6 is him. Then... 7 to 12 is our next character, the um, Acolyte there. Then we got our Bruiser guy, so he's parts 19 to 26. Our two dogs are only three parts each, that's pretty good. Uh, and there's our Bruiser on the back there, he's parts 13 to 18. So I really need to put my glasses on when I do these videos. So yeah, there's our... Crossbow gunner, and yeah, part 22 with that funny, uh, spooky looking mask is that is his head. I really do like it, they all have a nice, um, very strong witch hunter vibe feel to them with good, um, heavy plate armor, lots of flowing cloaks, and very menacing and imposing looks to them. All right. Let's move on then to the cards. So we'll go through the actual Warbands cards itself first. So we know what this is. This is just the 
intro and the deck. So if you ever do demolish your deck, this is something they've been doing now, and that's basically giving you a list of the cards that are in this particular set. Because the rival format uses the ready-to-play rival decks. So it's nice that you have this to refer to for when you decide to take this deck apart and make your own. So here we have our characters. So first off, Amos Duncaro, who is a brawler and a hunter. So he has a free square movement, rolls shields for defense, has free health. His great axe is a range one, rolls two dice requiring hammers, and its attack does two damage. So his inspiring condition is any enemy fighter's attack action targets a friendly Haskell Hexbane. So he's a big protector. He has the price of victory reaction, so see Hexbane's fighter cards, we'll get to that in a minute. And we have the reassuring presence, so in the, if this fighter is within two hexes of another friendly hunter, and that hunter is a target of an attack, this fighter is a supporting fighter. Nice, that's pretty cool. And he's inspired card, so he has an uh, extra one on his great axe, extra dice for his great axe, and he has a cleave rule. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So next up we got Bridget Axwald, who likes her axes. She's a hunter. She has a movement of three, rolls dodges for her defense, and has two health. So she has dual axes, which attacks at run range one, has three dice requiring swords, and the attack does two damage. She has her volley pistol, which is a range of three, two dice with hammers, one damage, and the volley rule. And she inspires when Haskell himself is inspired. So she has the Prize of Victory, which is unique to this warband, and she has Volley. So a reaction. The first time this attack action is made each round, if the target is adjacent to this fighter, pick one to either get a plus one dice or plus two damage for this attack action. So that's nice. And inspired, she has... Uh, extra shot for her volley pistol, and this time requires swords and gains cleave. So, and she also has a better defense as well, she's inspired. That's pretty cool. So, Grotbiter, Companion and Quiet Pock. He has a movement of four, rolls dodges for his defense, and has two health. His bite is range one has two attack dice with acquiring swords and does one damage. So he's um, inspiring condition is a friendly rat spike and or quiet pock is out of action. This fighter cannot be a hunt cannot be a hunter. This fighter has no bounty unless a friendly rat spike is out of action. And the Loyal Hound reaction, so you see Rat Spike's fighter card. And inspired, he gains an extra defense and an extra attack dice for his Tearing Bite. I keep moving the cards off camera. Moving to the man of the warband, Haskell Hex Hexbane himself. So he's a hunter and the leader. Movement of three, defense of one requiring shields and three health. So he's got his black powder pistols, so range of three, three damage, three dice requiring swords, one damage, and grievous. So his inspiring condition is this fighter's attack action takes an enemy out of, fighter out of action. So if he takes one down, he gets inspired. And the price of victory, so this is the rule that's unique to most of the human characters in this warband. So it's a reaction after, use this after a friendly hunter is dealt damage, that would take them out of action. After the out of action check, give this fighter one upgrade card from your hand or remove one charge or move token from this fighter. Do not spend any glory points when you play that card. Nice. So there's a way of um, upgrading your guys to have something to always um, counteract your opponents. And he's inspire conditions, so he gets his true fire brand, 
which is these flaming torch, I'm guessing. Range one. Two dice requiring hammers with two damage and grievous. His pistols are now three attacks with two damage. And his remaining stats are all the same. So next we have Quiet Pock, who's a hunter. It looks pretty scary actually, especially with that uh, mask on. So he has three movement, two defense dice requiring shields, two health. He's got his crossbow launcher, which is a range three. Two attack dice requiring hammers with two damage. Has reload and knockback one. Then he's got the stock of his crossbow, which is close range for one. Two attack dice requiring swords and one damage. So his inspired condition is if a friendly rat spike or grot biter is taken out of action. Price of victory as hexbane and reload. So this fighter can only attack this action, make this attack action once per phase. And his inspired condition is not much different. We just have one extra attack for his launcher, and that is it. And we got Rat Spike, the other dog, so companion to Quiet Pock. Has a movement of four, a one dodge, and two health. And he's Ferocious Bite, range one, two attacks requiring swords and one damage. And again, much like the other two, he has the inspired condition of Grot Biter or Quiet Pock being taken out of action. Again, he can't be a hunter and he cannot, cannot have a bounty unless Grot Biter is out of action. And then he has the Loyal Hound reaction, so use this after a friendly hunter's move action, this fighter makes a move action. So he's a pretty quick guy. And inspired, his ferocious bite goes up to three dice. Oh, yeah, very good. So next we've got the gambits and upgrades, and then the objectives. So, first off, by hook or by crook. By order of the vault. Circle of silvered grave salt. For the order. Lead the crusade. Making a point. Prayers of the faithful. Sanctified sharpening stone. War of Marti Ward of Martyr's blood. You stand accused. Heresy. Bane of evil. Charmed horseshoe. Cold iron nails. Deep scars. Who's uh, that's very. Um, Ominous. So no one is sure if Pock's silence is a result of an injury or a resolution only he can understand. So I'm guessing he got severely burned because he's touching his face and staring at the fire intently. He is definitely a really unnerving character. Lucky Hexbeak Foot. Martyr's Fervor. Protective Brand. Retractable Pistol. <laughs> That's going to be cool. The Lantern of Vengeance. Woodcutter's strength, and then on to our objectives. So we got an eye for an eye for one glory. Burn them out for one glory. Due process for one glory. Ah, oh, poor Skaven. Fear the righteous for two glory. Interrogate the wicked for two glory. Lies well spent for two glory. Loaded for bear. For one glory, proof of guilt for two glory, sowing doubt for one, tools of the faithful for two, uncover the truth for one, and weapons of justice for one. So not many free glory cards, so you are going to hopefully be um, uh, scoring a couple of these per turn in order to get some good um, glory points. So that is our Warband cards, and moving on to our additional cards. So there we have the 
wonderful box art. These are lovely pieces of artwork. I think I've kept every uh, one of these that I've had as they are just great. They, I use these as the covers for the um, baggies. I keep all the cards in for individual warbands as it's an easy way of knowing which bag contains which warband. So we've got a Gambit, Discipline Strike, Sadistic Stab, Doom Foretold, Flying Bludgeon, Blind Gamble, Drifting Tides, Drowning Warriors, Hold Back the Tide, Reality Check, or oh, Wet Rat, Straggler, Whirlpool, Channeled Force as an upgrade, Freshing Throw as an upgrade, Grave Baron, Tenacious Survivor, Breathing Tube, Cursed Map Fragment, Cursed Musket, Gloom Drinker, Penumbral Key, Reflecting Mask. The Edge of Darkness, and that's all for our upgrades. Now on to our objectives. So we've got Bastion of Light for one. Divine Attention for one. Kagra, that's the ones I was trying to think of. Kagra's Ravagers. Unworthy Souls, uh, Duke Crack Marrow. Still, I think, has to be one of my um, favourite warbands. I just love the... Um, Flesh Eater Quartz, next to my Skaven, definitely my favourite. Easy target for one, Warlock the Skull. I think that must be his only words he ever says, so he's kind of like grouped. Uh, bottom Feeders for one, Flying High for one, Having a Brawl for one, Not Backing Down for one. On the scent for one and uncovered treasures for one. There, uh, yeah. I uh, got uh, three, four, even Grand Alliance cards there one for order, one for chaos, one for death, and one for destruction. And then we got uh, four Grand Alliance cards there order. Chaos, Death, and Destruction. And we've got all our Universals, so that's pretty cool. Right, I'll bring everything in for a final thought on this set. Okay, and there we have Hexbane's Hunters. I think it is a very nice little warband, and if, like me, you had a, have a fondness for the uh, Witch Hunter trope, of classic uh, fantasy, then it is definitely one for you. This does harken back a lot of details to the classic Mordheim Warband, which is one I had been eyeing up for a long time, but sadly I never got around to getting it before it went out of stock. And I think trying to get it now would be damn near impossible. Either way, I think this is a great Warband and is going to be one of my favourites, I think, for going forward. I might even try and get these done up, and I might do a Halloween special where I play a game of Underworlds. I think I'll do Witch Hunters against something ghoulish, so probably my Night Haunts or my Flesh Eater Courts. But, um, like I said, I think this is a great uh, little warband. Some good cards, especially the Alliance cards and the Universal cards. Some of those might be finding their way into my Skaven deck. I really need to look at that. Something I have to spend one day sometime soon going through all my cards and updating my decks. Um, Price-wise for this, it is... £26 RRP. I picked mine up from Bridge Troll Hobbies, which is my local gaming store. But I paid £23.40 for it. Uh, so that is everything. I'd like to take this chance to thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe for more mad content. 
If you think I deserve it, please give this video a like, as well as sharing with all your social media groups. And uh, there are, of course, links in my in the description down below for all my usual uh, channels and social medias. So, thank you very much again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.